Rakesh Sharma from McNeil Rugby Travel. I just wanted to pick up on our friend from Belfast Media Group, Martin's comments on the Belfast to New York link. Um, and I'm, I'm aware of all the discussions that have been taking place with the assembly and various people uh, at, at treasury level. Um, the, the issue is actually beyond just the Belfast New York service because I'm involved along with others in this room um, in talks with other international airlines to bring their services to Northern Ireland. And as early as last night, I was in discussions with a uh, fairly large international airline who are considering not coming into Northern Ireland because of that. Um, and we all know the benefits of a, an airlink, particularly an intercontinental airlink, in terms of jobs and investment and, and all of the other uh, benefits that that brings to any area. So um, I just wanted to, to make the point that that is much more than just the, the Belfast, New York. If there is a solution, it needs to be a solution that will welcome any international airline into the region rather than just solve the problem for the for the current international airline that's there. Yeah, well, I mean, the continental link between Belfast and uh, New York, which, which many of us use uh, on an ongoing basis, it's, it's a very, very vital link for us, and it would be a disaster, in our opinion, particularly uh, against the backdrop of the challenges that we're faced into the future and trying to attract foreign direct investment if that link were lost, particularly because uh, the United States, of all of the areas that we've been working with, is the one which is absolutely bursting with potential in terms of new investment. So we have taken steps to secure uh, that link and I think it'll be okay. What you raise now is a bigger issue and that is something that we're gonna to have to have further discussions with and I'd, I'd be very interested if you would, uh, I'm sure you're talking to the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment and uh, Arlene Foster about this issue. It's certainly that aspect of it is a, is a dimension which we will uh, take a very keen interest in. <coughs> Gentlemen, just please. Declan <coughs> Kelly, uh, Focus Business Advisors. Uh, Mr. McGuinness, you represent a constituency, a rural constituency, where a large number of tradesmen and women are out of work. You're from a city where recently the new council unit was cancelled. Yet the executive has taken a decision, two decisions in fact, First of all, not to introduce water rates, and secondly, to get rid of prescription charges. Over 50% of the people in this uh, province uh, have public sector jobs and can well afford to pay water rates, can well afford to pay prescriptions. I put it to you that it's time that you took the hard decision and introduced water rates, used the money for infrastructure development, for hospitals and for schools and for roads, and you should reintroduce prescription charges, and that way you might be able to develop a new council unit in your own city. Well, f first of all, let me say that the cost of uh, prescri the prescription charges uh, not being imposed on citizens is something like 11 million pounds. Uh, the, the issue of the cancer centre is a, a different proposition altogether. The, Construction of the cancer centre was effectively part of a high level agreement between our executive and the Irish government to facilitate people from County Donegal, Derry, parts of County Tyrone, Coleraine and Limavady. So the money for it has been legislated for, both in our budget and in the budgets of the government in the south, uh, as also where the running costs uh, once the building is constructed. It's incomprehensible to many people in the city that I come from. It's also incomprehensible to many members of the executive as to why Michael McGimsey took that decision. It was a highly political decision. It's not often you get Gregory Campbell and I agreeing that it was a political act of discrimination against the people of that region. The reality was on the day that Michael McGimsey made the statement, that it was a Wednesday. The day before, 24 hours previously, Peter Robinson and I co-chaired a meeting of the executive in Stormont Castle, and he never mentioned it. He went straight down to the assembly the next morning, knowing that the assembly was on its last day, and made the decision. I think it was a very damaging decision for the Ulster Unionist Party, and for Michael McGimsey as minister. So the funding of the, uh, the radiotherapy unit 
uh, is legislated for both by the Irish government and by our administration. And Peter Robinson and I have both agreed that one of the first decisions that will be taken when the executive resumes in the aftermath of the election will be the construction of the uh, radiotherapy unit. Of that, you can be absolutely certain. And that will provide, hopefully, much needed jobs for people in the construction industry and hopefully even some for my own constituency. Thank you. Um, Gavin Forkin from Plan Energy Consulting. Um, we work in the renewable energy industry and um, businesses in this industry over the next 10 years plan to um, invest somewhere in the region of £2 billion in projects in Northern Ireland, bringing several thousand jobs uh, locally. What, um, what plans does the incoming executive have for facilitating this industry in terms of grid infrastructure upgrades and in terms of planning reform? Well, I, I think we're, we're really conscious of the challenges that uh, all of this poses for us in, in the time ahead. Peter Robinson and I and Arlene Foster have already been to the harbour uh, where uh, the recent announcement of uh, a facility to promote uh, renewable energy and the construction of the machinery required for that will be, uh, will, will be effectively constructed on that site. So we understand the importance of that and the <coughs> significance of the potential that all of that has for thousands of new jobs into the future. I certainly think that we, through the Department of Enterprise, State and Investment, who have the, obviously the chief responsibility for dealing with uh, energy matters, uh, recognize that it is absolutely vital that we put ourselves into a position where we can take advantage of the opportunities that will be presented in the time ahead. This is something that has been widely discussed through the offices of the British Irish Council, which uh, many of us uh, attend, uh, along with Scotland and Wales and uh, our colleagues in Dublin. And is always a major item on our agenda at the British Irish Council, because we all recognize that there are huge opportunities uh, ahead for all of us if we can capitalize on the uh, situation which exists at the moment where quite clearly a lot of people in business internationally are now moving in the direction of uh, uh, diversification in terms of uh, the renewable energy uh, process. So it is something that we're seriously considering and I know a lot of work has gone on within Arlene Foster's uh, department uh, in that regard. 